In this video lesson we shall see how files and folders are stored in the computer, why each file has an extension, how to enable or disable certain panes and how to navigate through folders. The whole computer is basically a large filing cabinet. The drawers in the cabinets are the drives in the computer. As with the drawers we can store folders and within these folders more files or folders. The drives are represented by drive letters. By clicking on Start, then Computer, we can see what drives are available. In this example, there are just two, the local disk drive labelled as C and a CD-ROM drive labelled as D. If there were a drive A, it would be a floppy disk drive. But floppy disk drives are very rare these days because of their low capacities. And if there was a drive B, it would have been a second floppy disk drive. Drive C is the hard drive and normally called the main drive. Drive D is usually assigned to the CD DVD ROM drive. Drives F to Z are used for network drives or other storage devices. Inside of a normal filing cabinet you will find folders and these folders can hold other folders and files. This applies to the hard drive, on this we can store folders and within the folders we can also store further folders and files. To open one of the drawers or drives we use the left hand mouse button and press this twice rapidly like we did in the last video lesson. When we do this it is called double clicking. What is displayed at this point depends upon what has been stored on the computer you are using but in most cases it will be similar to what we can see here. Here we can see four folders perf logs, program files, users and windows. The folder that we are interested in is the windows folder we double click on this folder we should find further folders within this folder called subfolders. Think of the folder add-ins being another folder within the Windows folder. At the side of this window you will find a scroll bar. This tells us that there are more folders and files within this window that can be displayed. To view these we position the mouse pointer on this bar then hold down the left hand mouse button. By dragging the bar downwards exposes the other folders and files. These are files or data that's been created by applications such as WordPad or art applications like Paint. Each different type of file has three letters attached to the end of the name which is normally hidden from the user. This is called the file extension. The file extension allows Windows to identify the type of file it is and what application it should use to open it with. We shall see a few examples of this in the next video lesson. On the side we can see a description of the application that is used to create this file. We can widen the window to view the types. Two examples are an XML document and a text document. Normally these are not interchangeable. In other words, we would use one application to access one of these and a different one to access the other. This will become clearer soon. There are two places you can manage your files, Windows Explorer or Computer. Windows Explorer is more or less the same as the computer. They both contain the same elements but they are arranged slightly different. To start Windows Explorer, click on the folder found on the taskbar. The window is split up into two panes. The left hand pane shows the structure of the folders. The right hand pane represents the contents of the selected item in the left hand pane. So if you click on the folder in the left hand pane then the contents will be shown in the right hand pane. For example if we want to know what is in the folder called documents we would click on it once. In our example we can see it is empty. Now if we click on the folder called music we have in our example a further folder called Sample Music. Windows organises all of the drives such as the hard drive, floppy disk drive, network drives into an end user. To open the computer click on Start then click on Computer. The layout allows us to view different aspects of the window. To see how they work we shall first remove them all. By clicking on Organise we find another drop down menu. So we move to Layout and this will cause a further drop down menu to appear. In our example we have two panes with ticks against them indicating that Detail pane and Navigation pane have been enabled. 
by clicking once on the detail pane causes the drop down menu to close. Now we remove the navigation pane in the same way. Here we shall enable the first pane called menu bar. Notice menu bar has been added to the top of the window and this allows us other options. As an example, if we click on view we can change the way we look at the icons. At present, tiles have been selected, but we can change this to large icons by selecting this option. Or we may find many hundreds of icons, so it would be useful to list them. Let's put them back in order as tiles and remove the menu bar. Next is the detail pane. Notice at the bottom of the window the properties on the item that is currently highlighted. If we highlight the local disk drive C by clicking on it once, we can see that the properties of the hard drive showing space used and free space. If we now click on the CD drive D, this information changes. If there were a disk in the drive, then the properties of this would have been displayed here. We shall remove this pane and select the next called Preview. Before we continue, notice these two icons that have been greyed out. Remember, from our last lesson, this means that they are unavailable or cannot be used at this time. If we place the mouse pointer on the first one, it is described as back, and the other, forward. We shall see how these change as we progress. Here, we have double-clicked on the C drive, and double-clicked on the folder called Users. Then on Public, on Public Pictures, and finally on sample pictures. Now we shall select the first picture by clicking on it once. And we can see how the picture has now been displayed in the preview pane area. The important point here, we have looked into a folder that was in a folder several times over. The question is, do we remember which folder was in which? Fortunately we don't have to, as Windows has remembered how we got here. It took a note of how we navigated to this point. Earlier we looked at these two icons and both were greyed out. Now the back one has become available, which means we can now use it. But before we do, notice the forward icon is still greyed out. Let's just click on the back button. This has taken us to public pictures. Now the forward icon has become available. In other words, if we click on this, it will take us forward to sample pictures. Since this was our original destination, we cannot go any further. You shall use the back button to return to the local drive C by clicking on it five times. Keep an eye on the browser. Notice the first icon is greyed out, since we are back when we started. But Windows has remembered where we have been. But the second icon is highlighted. By clicking on this icon, we can advance forward. then back again. Let's repeat what we have just done and see the effect, but using the navigation pane. So we first double click on the computer, then on local disk C, users, public. Notice we cannot see any further down here, so as before we can use the scroll bar Or if we look closer, we can see an arrow pointing downwards. There is another arrow pointing upwards. By clicking on the bottom arrow, we'll cause the scroll bar to gradually come down, allowing us to view the rest of the folders in the navigation pane. Or on the opposite one, to move the scroll bar upwards. We continue through public pictures, sample pictures, then we select the first picture. By selecting the navigation pane, 
we can see at the side how we arrived at this picture. We could, as before, use the back button, but this time we shall just jump to the computer by clicking on the navigation pane. Notice at the side of these folders another small icon that indicates that each of these folders are open. If we click on the public picture folder, that small icon will change showing that the folder is now closed. We can also close the public folder by clicking on this icon. So we can see how we are navigating back. It's not necessary to close them all. We can just click on the first icon called computer. Let's reset the panes back to what they were. Details and navigation pane. Next we shall discover more about the desktop, how and why we use the screen saver, more about icons and how they differ between applications, how the recycle bin works and we shall discover how to restore deleted files and folders.